What's good, trappers? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper, and y'all know my goal is to help the culture build wealth one share at a time. Now, check this out. Right now, we know I talked about bringing an episode to us, a series to us, called Whale Watching Wednesdays. Now, the goal with Whale Watching Wednesdays is for us to understand how the whales are moving. Now, some of y'all might be like, well, Trap, what is a whale? For all my new people who don't know what a whale is, if you were part of Trap and Tuesdays, I introduced this segment a couple weeks back, right? And I realized that I wanted us to understand how stock prices move. So my goal is never to like tell us, pick these stocks, these stocks are going to triple for us, right? I'm, that's not my goal here. My goal here is to teach us how to be great value investors, right? And help us understand how we can navigate and maneuver through these markets properly and efficiently, but most importantly, confidently, right? So what are whales, right? So whales are the institutions, right? These are your hedge funds, your pension funds, right? These are your, your independent large investors, right? These are your um, um, wealth management groups, right? Insurance companies, even banks are whales, right? And so what whales do are they buy millions of stock at a time, anywhere between 500,000 to millions of stock at a time. Now, the thing about being a whale is this. Whales can't just gobble up all these stocks at one time, right? So what they normally do is this. They normally buy anywhere between 5 to 20% of a business at a time or of stocks at a time. Now, they'll do this in a 45 day, sometimes a six week increment, depending on how much they love the business. Now, at one time, the only way that we could figure out what the whales were doing were by, you know, waiting for the SEC to tell us, so on and so forth, right? But now every 45 days, they gotta report what they've done. And so now this gives us an inside look or an inside perspective on how the big boys are moving. Now, there's always something to that, right? Now, what I want us to know is this. It's good for us to pay attention to the whales, but also know that it's real dangerous following them, right? So think about this. You ever saw, like, on National Geographic or something, right? You ever saw, like, the sharks, when they moving around all the whales, and they always have a little fish with it, attached to it, just going everywhere they go, that's us. You feel me? We want to see what they're doing. We want to understand why they're doing. So now when we understand this, we start understanding, like, why the market is moving the way it's moving. We can understand what's going on. Because essentially, in order for stock prices to go up, people have to be buying them, right? And in order for stock prices to go down, People have to be selling them. Now, we are what's called retail investors. As retail investors, we don't have enough power to move a stock 10, 15% in a day. If we all get together, we only gonna move a stock probably about 10 cents. You feel me? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> but these whales had a capacity to move a stock by dollars, sometimes five, 10, 15 dollars. 20%, 15% in a day. And that's because whales are moving on. Here's what really happens. One whale buys, another whale gets whip of it, he buys. This is why what they do is they'll buy a little bit at a time not to turn everybody else on. Now, just like whales, right? These whales of investors, they like to go below the radar. So they have these huge firms. They have people doing a lot of homework for them, quantitative and qualitative analysis, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, people that really do all the homework. Speaking of that, I think I could be like a whale, right? Real talk. My money ain't there yet, but I do some pretty damn good research on the business. You feel me? So, and that's what I want to teach us. I want to teach us not how to just go on somebody's page and take the stocks that they saying, because we're doing ourselves a disservice doing that. We're putting ourselves at a disadvantage because Trapper said this stock, I'm going to buy this stock because anybody, we putting ourselves at a disadvantage, right? And also the research that that person did on the business, we didn't do it. 
So we can't just go off that. And so my goal now with this, one of the elements and one of the segments that I'll be doing is this whale watching Wednesdays is to educate us on not only what the whales are doing, but this channel from here on out is focused on making everybody better investors, right? So I'll be bringing out a few things. I'm rolling it out going into the new year. Um, and the goal is just to put us on game, man. The goal is just to put us on game. So um, what I want to do is just tap in. So let's tap into our first well, right? Our first well is First Eagle Investment, right? First Eagle Investment, right? So as of November 21st, here are some of the moves they made. They currently have 59 stocks in their portfolio. The portfolio is worth $896,722,000. Not bad, right? Kind of on a, on a smaller end, but still a well. Still a well, right? So uh, they haven't done too much. They, what, what they did was uh, they reduced 6% of Exxon, right? Uh, it represents... 2.58% of their portfolio, right? So Exxon represents 2.5% of their portfolio. Um, they reduced 6.43%, uh, making them now have 710,000 shares, right? They The average share price is $32.62 um, for a portfolio value of $23,172,000. dollars now, one of the things I also want to pay attention to when we're talking about the whales is we want to kind of ask ourselves, like, why are they selling or why are they buying, right? All the, oftentimes, they're not, it's not just because they're taking profits off of the table. Oftentimes, some of the time, they're just saying, you know what, this just isn't a good business for me to have right now, right? And so one of the things I want us to know is this. You don't always have to find, like, a million companies that's doing well. One of the things the whales do are they research businesses extremely well from top to bottom. They get to learn everything they can about a business so they can understand the moves that the business is making. It's kind of like you're having a friend, right? And you're like, you know what? This has been my friend for a long time. I need to learn everything. I need. So when you act in a certain kind of way, I know I know why you're acting like that. Like your girl tripping, it's cool. I get it. Uh, you, you just lost something. I get it. You just didn't want to get moves. I get it. But because I've studied you and learned you so much, I know why you're moving the way you're moving, right? And so that's how we have to be with these businesses, right? I often talk about me doing just research, 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 because I personally want to understand. I want to understand the CEO. I want to understand why the CEO is moving the way he's moving or she's moving the way she's moving. Are they being 100% um, with me or are they just trying to sell me the business, right? Because CEOs are great at selling you the business, right? And so I, I want to understand are they genuine, are they authentic to the business, right? I want to understand, like, do they really want to see the business grow? Are they really providing value to us as shareholders, right? So one of the things I think is so excellent, we're just not in that phase right now. Like the world is getting towards clean energy. Um, you see when Joe Biden and Trump was in office, one of the biggest things they talk about was fracking. And one of the things that fracking is, is when they digging underground for these oils and these gases and it lets off a lot of toxins and it's not really good for the, for the air. But it's not worse than what CO2 gases that cows do, that agriculture that nobody's going to talk about. Because that's a trillion dollar industry. We ain't even going to get into that, right? We... We ain't gonna get into that. So one of the things, um, I just think Exxon isn't performing like that. Like the energy sector in itself is not really performing like that. Um, and as the world gets cleaner, if these energy companies don't clean it up, like I know Exxon, Chevron, they were cutting down on um, these chambers that was letting off all the gas and stuff. They were kind of letting down on, on that. So we gotta just see what's up with that. Uh, I see that he reduced, they reduced, 2.44% of Newmont Corp, which is a mining corp, which is one of the best mining businesses they have. Now, I think he just took some profits off the table with that, right? Uh, it only represents 1.96% of their portfolio. They have 279,000 shares, average price $62.84, and it's roughly about $17,549,000, right? So that's pretty good, right? Let's see what he added, though. Okay, so he added, they added 
uh, in American Express. Now, I'm not mad at adding 13% into American Express. It represents 1.43% of their portfolio. Uh, they have 140,000 shares of the business. Average price around $91.24. Um, value is about 12800000 Now, I'm not really mad at that simply because as we move forward, as we go digital, as we get into this phase. Now, one of the things I've talked about moving forward is digital contactless payment, right? And American Express actually has one of the best most, I think, outside of Visa. Um, I think Visa and American Express have the best moats when it comes to the credit card game. Um, so I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that at all. Uh, definitely not mad at that at all. So let's, let's get into somebody else, right? Let's, let's dig. Like, that's what this is about. We're not going to just stick to one person. Every week, we're going to get into different people um, and see what they got going on. Um, I definitely want us to just be mindful of this, take notes of this. Let's see what they're doing. Um, it's, 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 it's really going to be, I think that Will Watch and Wednesday will be something great for us. Right? So let's get into this one. Let's see. So here's one of my favorites, right? Uh, Lee Ansley, right, with Maverick Capital. Lee Ansley with Maverick Capital, right? As of October, he has, they have, 561 stocks in their portfolio, right? With a portfolio value of $5,379,601,000. Damn! <laughs> so let's see. Off the top, we've seen that their sell, he reduced 19.80% of Facebook. Hmm. Now we're thinking. He reduced that by 19%. Facebook represents 6% of his portfolio still. So I'm thinking maybe he took something off the table, right? With a lot that's going on with Facebook, he's going to take that money. Now, here's the dope part about that. When we see them reduce 19% from Facebook, so they have 1,360,000,000 shares. I mean, 1,360,000 shares. Uh, at a value of three hundred and fifty-six million dollars, four hundred and six thousand, right? But when we see them reduce Facebook by nineteen percent, but then I see them add Lamb Research by two hundred and seventeen percent, right? Now I talked about Lamb Research a while back. It is a business that I actually love. Why right? I haven't invested in it because I haven't gotten around to the price that I like. But I definitely think that Lamb Research is a great business. Now, Lamb Research represents 4.54% of his portfolio, right? With about 735,000 shares, right? Average price, uh, $331. Now, check this out. It's still estimated value $244,054. So when we see this, what I mean by understanding how the whales move. Now, here's the thing. Even though he reduced Facebook by 19.80%, don't be surprised. We'll revisit that and see how they got back in there. See, the goal and the objective for them is this. Study your business until you know the business. Buy it at a great price. Let it get overvalued. Sell some of it. Take those profits Move it into another business that you like, right? Let that run up. Hopefully, that one goes down. Take profits from another business, add it, right? And they just keep playing this game. Because here's the thing about the whales. People are consistently giving them money to invest for them. So the objective for them is to do what? Perform. Make money. Make my money make money. This is why I have in your pension fund. This is why I'm in your mutual funds. This is why I'm in your, your wealth management group. This is why you're banking with Chase. This is why you're banking with uh, Goldman Sachs. You want these people to make money for you. So the thing about it is this. They never have to actually sell the position 100%. They never have to sell the position 100%. So only thing they literally have to do, buy a great business that they've done great research on, understand the business 100%. Once they understand the business, 
The next thing they do is invest in the business, let the business run, take profits, invest into another business, rinse and repeat. We can keep doing this for the long term. Right now, I personally would rather us buy, hold, right? Hear me out. Hold. When you see it's overvalued, you now take some money, reposition it to somewhere else. This is called asset allocation, rebalancing your portfolio. I think I'll do a class on rebalancing our portfolios because I want us to really understand how this game is played. Again, don't get me wrong. I'm going to come on here some days and say, look, these are the stocks I'm looking at this month. Just to tell you all some stocks I'm looking at. Right. I'm going to come on here some days and say, man, I just bought these stocks. Well, I'm not going to do it on here. I'll probably do it in my Insta in my Facebook group. But I'll tell you all stocks that I'm watching. I don't have a problem with that. Right. But also. Being able to rebalance your portfolio is essential. Just to you being successful. So let's see what else he did. Now, this is interesting. He sold 22% of Amazon, which represents 4% of his portfolio. Hmm. 72,000 shares at the average price of 31.48. So he, right? Now, I did some homework the other day and we value Amazon at 40, we value Amazon at a $4,100 stock. So it's actually trading undervalued. So I get it. So that's how I understand why he sold off on Amazon. So what we're going to do now is, you know, just do some research and see why. Right? But the estimated value of Amazon for him is $227 million. Jeez. But he went through the whole, he went through the whole thing because he reduced Facebook. He reduced Amazon. He reduced Microsoft. He reduced Netflix and Google. He, re he reduced Google by 28%. He also re reduced Netflix by 36%. So he went through the entire thing and reduced. But he bought more lamb. But also what we're seeing is, wow, applied materials. Take a single AMAT which represents 0.99%, 0.99%, so it's less than 1%. He added 194,000%. Golly! Average price, $59. It represents $53 million. Now, see, when you see these, when, I, when, when you hear me say that these whales only have less than 1%, these are businesses that they are establishing themselves in. They're establishing themselves. So this is the one thing I also notice about whales. When you look at whales, their top five positions are their big dogs, right? The top five positions are the businesses that they love and that they like, yo, I'm going all in on this, right? But then you'll see them getting into business at like less than 1%. You know what I'm saying? You'll see that. And so that tells me that they're like, you know, finding some. So these are been. So when I see them doing things like this, like less than one percent, right? So for me, what I'm gonna go do is say, okay, what did they see? You know what I'm saying? Like, hmm, what did they see? That's how I move. What did they see? I wonder what they're looking at. I wonder what they found out. So he bought into applied materials, right? But also, look at this. Look at this. So he bought GameStop, bought McDonald's. Bought Brown and Foreman. Shout out to Jack. Now check this out. He just purchased 22,000%. But it only makes up 0.11%. So it's less, way less than 1%. He bought 126,000 shares of Morgan Stanley. At $48 a share. For $6 million. Interesting. 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 Hmm. Let's look, y'all. Ah. He also just bought 0.08%. 55,000 shares of Dunkin' Brands. And that's at... 
3,576%. Average price $81. It represents $4,569,000. Now, on Chapman Tuesdays, I talked about something. I talked about how Duncan Brands actually closed 800 stores and is opening up another 800 stores. So they closed 800 unprofitable stores. So open up another 850, not actual stores, but curbside services and pickup spots because so now they are evolving same thing starbucks did they're evolving and they already had the drive through so instead of them wasting money it's kind of like having a ghost kitchen instead of them wasting money they're gonna have a little place where you can pick up and go hmm that's interesting so i guess you'll make your order you go to the place closest to the damn that's interesting i wonder if that's what he bought it on y'all i wonder ah but look how you try to sneak this one in on us. Bought 11,000%. He bought 30,000 shares of Apple. Hmm. At $115. Represent $3,485,000 worth of his uh, value to his company. That's interesting. That's interesting. So, you know... That's the goal, and that's the purpose for us, man. That was just two two wells that we looked at tonight. Uh, definitely want to bring this in. Um, I got some things setting up for 2021. Um, the way whale washing lenses is definitely going to be one. Um, we're going to bring more things um, to the to the to the YouTube world. I told y'all, man, we're going to go in mixtape wheezy mode, right? So definitely, man, do me a favor, man. Spread this, like this, right? Click the description below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, right? We're going to flood the streets with this blue magic, man. It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. And my goal is to help the culture build well one share at a time. The right way, though, value investing. I won't try to put you on anything like these are some hot stocks. This, this, I'll tell you if stocks are making momentum. I'll tell you if some stocks are losing momentum. I'll tell you some things that I'm looking at. I'll tell you once a month some companies I'm looking at. But the thing is, I want us to get... Um, in tune with actually learning how to research different components of this, man. Also, I'll be doing a lot, lot of live things inside of my group, Trappers Anonymous. Click the link below, join Trappers Anonymous, man. Trap with me.